for joining us again today. I'm your pastor, Dr. Mark D. Hallelujah. It's nice to have you. Today is October 17th, 2020. Glory be to God. We are going to uh, take communion today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Why do we take communion? That's the thing right there. Why do we take communion? We take communion for commemorance, for the commemorance and remember that Jesus died on the cross for us. Jesus has died on the cross to take away our sins. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. He said, do it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. We're going to go over some scriptures before we actually take communion so you can understand why we do it. Hallelujah. Uh, let me go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now and we just say thank you, Father God. We thank you for the blood of Christ. We thank you, Father God, that Jesus died on the cross for us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we ask that you bring this word with power and authority. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. We glorify your name and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to talk about the communion of the body of Christ. And I'm going to read out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, uh, 17, and 18. Verse 16 and 17. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16 and 17. The cup of the blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Christ told us, let me read verse 17. For we, being many, are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Okay? So we are all partakers of that one bread. We are all partakers of Jesus dying on the cross for us. We are all partakers that when Jesus died, he took the sins of the world away. He took the sins of the world away. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah. So let me read this again so we can understand it. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ, that is the juice that we drink. We don't drink real blood. We don't know. It ain't what you're supposed to do. We're using it as a simulate, uh, uh, as a uh, uh, a simulation of the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ has power. It has deliverance. It keeps you. It saves you. It delivers you. Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus, glory to you, to your name. Woo. Hmm. The bread which we break is, is not the communion of the body of Christ. And that's why we use uh, crackers or wafers of bread. This is what we use. This is juice. This is not wine. This is great juice. It's just in a packet. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we glorify your name today. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. Woo, glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, glory, 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 glory. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go on up to uh, verse, uh, verse 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and 23. And we're going to read uh, pretty much this whole, the rest of the chapter. We're going to start uh, at verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Hey, glory to God. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat. This is my body, which 
is broken for you this day. This do in remembrance of me. He is telling you, you break the bread and so you can remember Christ. After the same manner, he took the cup when he when he had stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup, drink the cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of Christ. Y'all are too loud. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let me read verse 27 again. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let, let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Okay, when he's talking about this, hallelujah, when he's talking about judge ourselves, we're going to go ahead and just everybody, we're going to repent just to make sure that we're right with Christ before we take our communion, okay? So I'm just going to say this prayer, hallelujah. Father God, we ask that you forgive us for all of our sins, Father God. We ask, Lord, that you wash us in the blood of Jesus, Lord. Forgive us for everything that we've done. Forgive us for everything that we said. And forgive us for everything that we thought about. In the name of Jesus, thank you for washing us in the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we did that just to make sure we, we don't want to take communion and we're, we're not in the right fellowship of Christ. He just told you it is damnation to you. And he just told you it's not good for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, let me say one more prayer. Father God, and we pray that we forgive everybody that have offended us, that have hurt us, that's lied on us, that talked about us. Father God, we don't want to hold any grudges, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we release them. In the name of Jesus, we forgive them just as you have forgiven us for all of our sins and shortcomings. We want to forgive and release everyone who have sinned against us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and and uh let's get our stuff together. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. This is only the second time that I've actually taken communion since I started the church, but we're going to start doing it every third Saturday. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Okay. Everybody got their wafers and their. Okay. Everybody. We're drinking the blood, everybody say the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.
Father God, we thank you for allowing us to take communion in the right heart and the right spirit. We thank you for the blood of Christ. We thank you for the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. Now let us eat and drink together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, glory be to God. We're going to move on with our service today. Hallelujah. And our subject is actually, I'm going to be reading actually out of uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, pretty much the whole chapter. And my subject today is Christians shouldn't lust after evil things. Hallelujah. We should not lust after evil things. So let's go back over, hallelujah, mm, to chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You had last week, hands hallelujah. Up. Glory be to God. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. You mentioned that. The reason we're so hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, now here we go. Real quick. <clears throat> This is when Israel was in the wilderness and they were murmuring and they were complaining. And some of them, and some of them, uh, uh, they just didn't want to do right. They had, they always had something to talk about, something to complain about. They got into idolatry. They got into stuff that they were not supposed to be doing. God had them in the wilderness so he can prove them. And some of them didn't make it, hallelujah, because they, they couldn't, they didn't want to do it. They just always had something to do. They always had something to say, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Hey. So we're going to start off at... Um, we going to let me read First Corinthians chap, chapter ten verse six. Okay, now these things were our examples to the to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as also ye lusted. All right, so he's telling them uh, now these things are were for our examples. They are, are examples that we should not lust after evil things as they did that were in the wilderness. I'm going to go ahead and read verse 1 through 6. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye, should, ye be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness." Now these things we, now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Now he's telling you right there, God was not pleased with them. He had them in the wilderness. He was trying to prove them. He was trying to get their heart back to, uh, to God. And some of them just wouldn't do it. They wanted to do their own thing. They was lusting after things that was not Christ. Jesus Christ followed them and, and gave them water out of the rock, out of a rock, a dry rock. How do you get water out of a dry rock? Because if it ain't Christ Jesus, you ain't going to get it. It says Jesus followed them. He was that rock that gave them water in the wilderness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 7. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, 
as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. So they sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Hallelujah. Verse 8, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. Hallelujah. Three and 23,000 people God judged in one day because they were into idolatry. Hallelujah. And they didn't want to do the will of God. So verse nine, neither let them tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of the serpent. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admiration upon whom the end of the world are come. So all these things happened for our examples. So we will know not to lust after evil things, that we don't get caught up and the things that's not of Christ. We're lusting after things that don't edify Christ. We're lusting, look, you ain't got no business lusting after another man's wife or another man's husband. You have no business lusting after things that's not going to edify Christ Jesus. It's, you don't have no business doing that. Even in the wilderness, after God delivered them out of Egypt, they were in the wilderness. God showed his power by giving them water out of a rock. And some were still complaining. Some were still murmuring. Some were still in idolatry. 23,000 people died in one day. God called judgment down on them. Hallelujah. Why? Because they were murmuring. They were complaining. They were still in idolatry. They were still fornicating. At some point in time, your grace and your mercy may run out. We don't know. You, you hope it don't. You want God to always be merciful to you. Look, I know ain't nobody perfect. Nobody's perfect. And we all sin and come short of the glory of God. But you do not live in your sin. Don't make an excuse and say, the Lord know my heart. You say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Give me another chance. And you get back up, you jump back up, and you get back in that fight for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to, this, to your name. Mm. Woo. Verse 12, wherefore let him that think as he stands, take, take he, lest he fall. It says, wherefore let him that think as he stands, take he, lest he fall. Because when you're standing in your own and you got your own strength and you're doing okay and everything is all right, all of a sudden something blindsides you and it didn't shook you. And you didn't messed up and you don't know where it came from, how it came from, it blindsided you. Because you stopped, you thought you were so strong and you stopped praying, you stopped reading your Bible, you stopped seeking God, you stopped going to church, you stopped listening to the preacher, you stopped listening to people that's in your life that are saved and spiritual, and you know give you wise counsel. You don't want to hear it. Hallelujah. And now you taking heed because you standing, I'm doing good, ain't nothing wrong. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, something comes, bam, it hits you like a freight train. And you wondering how you got there. Glory to God. You wondering what happened. Now let's read verse 13 because this is real good. Woo! There has no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now let's break this down. There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Listen to me. Let's get something straight. 
God will make you uh, give you a way out. But if you don't take that way out, you didn't lost. God will give you a way out. But if you don't take that way, the first time that door opened for you to get out, you lost. You didn't mess up. I'm just telling you that now. You can't keep sitting around and saying, I'm going to be all right. 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 I'm okay. I'm okay. When God tells you to get up and go, you need to get up and go. Because if you don't, you didn't mess up. Hallelujah. He'll give you a way of escape and a way out. But if he don't, if you don't take it when he give it to you, that's where the problem comes in. You got to take that, take that escape when he first shows it to you. You can't say, well, I'm just going to wait another 30 minutes. I'm going to wait another hour. I'll be all right. No, he won't. Because now, even though he gives you a way of an escape and a way out, you didn't take it. So now you stuck in whatever sin you said you wasn't going to do, you're going to do it because now that door is shut. You literally, sometimes you have to run from certain places. Listen, sometimes you have to run from certain people. Amen. Sometimes you got to run from certain people. You a man, she a woman, y'all know y'all attracted to each other. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It ain't nothing wrong with y'all sitting around talking, but after a certain amount of time, it's something about dark. When it's starting to get darker, after three or four hours, hallelujah, all of a sudden you look at her. Mm. She's starting to look real good. That's when you need to say, okay, God bless you. I will see you later. Because if you don't, your way of escape and your way uh, your way out and a way of escape, you didn't take it, and you're going to fall. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So let me read verse 13 again. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape? that ye may be able to bear. Let's go up to the first part. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. So being tempted is not a sin. That is not a sin. You're man, you're human. You're a human being, you're going to get tempted. Now, what do you do or what defenses do you put up to try to make sure you don't go back to that sin or fall into that sin. I tell everybody, listen, sin to your flesh feels good. Let's just get that out the way. Sin to your flesh feels good. So now we know that sins feel good to our flesh. So now we got to make sure there's certain things that we need to uh, try to safeguard ourselves from. I was telling people, and I tell them all the time, I never had a problem with drinking and smoking and drugs. And I didn't have a problem with women until I got saved. All of a sudden, they came from everywhere. You have to make a safeguard for yourself. I'm not telling you to be a hermit, to shut up and lock the door. Don't say nothing to nobody. Don't say hi. Don't go to the movies with them or nothing like that or go hang out with them. I'm not saying that. But you got to know what your limit is. And you got to be careful what it is. Because all of a sudden, and everybody been through it, if you my age, 50 years old, close to it, a little bit older, you know there's been some times where you said, how did I get into this? So we have to be careful about it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! Mm -hmm. Now let's go to four, verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. He, when he's telling you to flee from idolatry, people think that you just worshiping, you know, a stone or wood. Idolatry nowadays, can they? Idolatry is what you watch on TV because you will not miss it no matter what. Idolatry 
is if you love your kids too much. Idolatry is if you love your spouse too much. Idolatry if you love your job too much. Idolatry if you learn if you like a a a, 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 a certain suit or shoes. You worshiping that stuff. You need to worship Christ Jesus. Thank God he gave you a big house and a big car. Thank God he's giving you nice clothes. But let it be known, you shouldn't worship nobody but Christ Jesus. Your dream job that he gives you, hallelujah, that shouldn't be idolatry. That shouldn't be the one thing that you live for. You live for your job more than you live for Christ. You live for your job more than you live for your wife. You live for uh, um, you live for your job more than you do for your children. Well, pastor, you get I gotta support them. You do gotta support them, but that don't mean you work eighty hours a week. That don't mean you work overtime every time it comes. Because now, even though you're giving them money, you don't have time to spend with them. As a parent, your kids want time to spend with you. And you might as well take it now because when they get 12, 13, 14, you know, in them teenage years, they don't want to hang out with their friends. Now you can say, you want to go to the store with me? Yeah, I'll go. Wait until they get 15, 16. You want to go with me? Nope. Where are we going? You buying me something? Hey, so enjoy it while you can. So we got to make sure idolatry is not consuming us. And even if you get your dream job, that should not take the place of you worshiping God. Listen to me. It shouldn't take the place of you spending family time with your, with your kids and your wife or whoever. All right? So watch idolatry. Idolatry can be your favorite team. Your favorite team. You get everything, whatever your favorite team is, that's all you got. And, that, and your idolatry is their logo that they got, the colors of your team. That's idolatry because you worship in something and it's not Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Woo! All right. So we understand that we shouldn't lust after evil things. We got to make sure that we do not lust after the things that don't glorify God. Thank God you got your Mercedes Benz, your BMW, your Maybox, your uh, uh, Rolls Royce. Glory be to God. Thank God that God gave you your $10 million uh, uh, mansion. Thank God for that. Praise the Lord for that. But it should not become an idol to you. Listen, there's a lot of people out here today, and I don't know too many of them, but entertainers, movie stars, actresses, whatever, uh, musicians, their, their idol is their music. Their idol is, 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 is getting on stage and performing. So you, whatever it is, don't ever put nothing above Christ Jesus. Not your 401k, how much money you make, how much money you don't make. There's nothing wrong with looking for a better job. But as long as it don't become your idol. Thank God for a wife. I'm, I'm looking for me one right now. Thank God for children. Your wife, your children should not become your idol. Yes, you need a balance. Yes, you need to spend time with them. Yes, you need to do stuff as a family. But they still should not become your idol. If your excuse is, I can't go to the church because I'm spending family time, if that's your excuse, every time you miss the church, you need to reevaluate. If we, I've learned over the last couple of years, if we manage our time the way we're supposed to, we have more than, not more than enough, we have enough time to spend with our family to do what we need to do for the, for the kingdom of God and also do what you need to do for yourself. It took me a long time. I'm 50. I'll be 51 next month. God is always good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen to me. Because, uh, uh, where is it at? Glory to God. We got to understand. Let me read 1 Corinthians 
chapter 12, verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So Christ is telling you, even though he has many members, we're still one body. So if you're doing something you're not supposed to do, it's like an infection. You can get an infection on your hand. If you don't take care of it, that it'll, it'll kill you. It'll go through your whole body. And sometimes they have to amputate. It. So even though we're many members in the body of Christ, we're one body. And we got to make sure we got to be strong for those who are not strong. There are some people that ain't strong, and the ones that are strong, we just got to be strong for them. We got to help them. We got to lift them up. We got to pray for them. Hallelujah. I know you're saying, well, I need somebody to pray for me. Amen. I need somebody to pray for me, too. But we, as saints, we need to be strong, and we don't need to lust after evil things. As a pastor, you don't need to lust after X amount of members or how much money the church is bringing in or, or, or what you got. You need to make sure that you're preaching for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to your name. And ain't nothing wrong with uh, uh, God blessing you to your congregation to build a, a big building and, and all that other stuff. That is good. But we always got to remember that it's Christ Jesus. Jesus is the head of our life. Even in our bad times, <clears throat> when you when you are saint of God and you got to go through a divorce and you wondering why, Lord, I'm going through this. I'm saved. I thought she was saved. I'm saved. I thought he was saved. You know, you, you got to understand that Jesus is Lord and you got to make sure that uh, uh, you keep your uh, focus on Christ on Christ Jesus, because when things are going bad, sometimes it's just hard to pray and we can't turn that anger. Look, you can lust after evil things being mad at somebody because all you're doing is mad at this person and you thinking of a way to get them back, to embarrass them, to do whatever. You can't do that. You don't need to do that. God is good. As a saint of God, we do not need to lust after evil things. Ain't nothing wrong with you wanting a nice house. Ain't nothing wrong with you want new clothes and new shoes, as long as they don't become your idol. You're, listen, you can't lust after evil things if all you want to do is preach and you don't want to have a lifestyle behind it. If all you want to do is have a big name, that is idolatry. You want people calling your name more than they want, more than they're calling Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And you can't do nothing if Jesus don't allow you to do it. Hallelujah. Gifts and callings are without repentance, but there's some things you cannot do. Hallelujah. You want to lay hands on folks and heal folks and don't do all that. You better make sure you want to do it for the body of Christ and not somebody just calling your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory, glory, glory. So we have to understand Woo! We cannot lust after evil things. We go back up here and we talk. They murmured. They were mad. They committed fornication. Mm, my God. When you murmur and complain, that means you'll find anything to murmur and complain about. I don't like the color of the carpet, the walls. It's too dark in here. It's too light in here. I don't know why they put that person over here. I could have did better. That person don't need to be here at all. That person ain't, ain't even saved. And uh, that person just slow and don't know nothing. I don't know why, whatever, whatever, whatever. Please do not lust after evil things. Look, thank God for retirement. I got a few years before I retire. Hey, enjoy your retirement. Thank God for retirement. Hallelujah. Thank God for retirement and good health in your right mind. But again, we do not lust after, uh, after evil things. What is evil things? Anything that you are putting above Christ Jesus. Look, that includes your grandkids. Because I know, look, when them grandkids come, your parents don't care nothing about you. All they care is about the grandkids. <laughs> That's so listen, 
we have to understand we should not lust after evil things. And I don't know what your evil thing is, but if your evil thing is just watching a certain show and you ain't missing that show for nothing, that may be an idol. If you're doing something all the time and it's taking a, anything that takes the place of Christ, let me put it that way, anything that takes the place of Christ, anything that's taken up all of Christ's time. When I mean all of Christ's time, meaning you don't go to church no more, meaning you don't pray no more, you don't read no more. Why? Because you have to do this. You have to do this. No matter what you're doing, where you're doing, how you're doing it, you always have time to pray. You may not be able to pray out loud, hallelujah, but you can be sitting there at your desk or in the meeting saying to yourself, thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Amen. Glory to your name. Thank you for leading and guiding me. Lord, I want to be right. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Do not lust after evil things. Do not lust. 23,000 people, it told you right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, died in the wilderness because Jesus followed them in a rock and gave them water. You know, when I'm thinking about it, it ain't just water that he gave them. He gave them spiritual water. They said that, wa that rock was Christ. Christ was a rock. Christ was giving you water. That was spiritual water. It's probably no water ever like that on the face of this earth again, because that water came out of rock, and that rock was Christ. But they murmured and complained. They were in idolatry. They were in fornication. They did what they wanted to do, and they didn't want to follow the word of God, the laws of God. Do your best to do the will of God. Do your best no matter what. If somebody's trying to call you a holy roller and it don't take all that, maybe it don't take all that for you, but you don't know what it takes for me. I want to live for Christ to the best of my ability. I want him to tell me, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Remember, the Bible says if all men speak good of you, you ain't doing something right. You ain't doing something right. Listen, if the world hated Jesus, they're going to hate you. And he tells you that. If they hated me, they're going to hate you. So be ready for opposition because you really live for Christ. Be ready for opposition because you're going to have the opportunity to lust after evil things. Remember, it's not being tempted is not the sin. It's falling to the temptation. That's the sin. So we have to work on it. And I listen, I know we all sin and come short of the glory of God. My sin is not yours. What you strong in, I'm not. What you weak in, I'm not. So we have to understand, glory to God, that Jesus is going to help us. But we have to make sure, whoo, glory to God, that we don't lust after evil things. We shouldn't lust after evil things. In the name of Jesus. Now, let me talk. I talked a lot. But let's get down to salvation. The salvation of the Lord, all he wants you to do is come to him. All, you, all he wants you to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I want to be right. Come into my heart. God will save you. After he saves you, he wants you to walk to the best of your ability, to the best of your ability to be saved. So you can be an example to other people. Listen, I know we've made mistakes. Even in our walk with Christ, we have made mistakes. But that don't mean we live in our mistakes. Living in sin and committing sin are two different things. Hallelujah. And, and listen. You messed up, you repented, now it's time to go. Don't let your mistakes kill you to the point where you say, well, Lord, I'm going to repent, but I ain't going to do nothing no more. No, you get back up and you do what God calls you to do in the body of Christ. Because once you stop, now the devil won, because now you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. And though all those saved that you could have had some, something to do with them getting saved or uh it's no more because you ain't doing what God told you to do. I know sometimes it's embarrassing and it hurt, but you do what God told you to do. Ain't nobody trying to squeak nothing under the carpet. 
Lord, I just want to be right. And listen, when I said that, I'm saying this. Don't nobody want, want nobody to know everything that they did. And I'm not telling you to sweep your sin under the carpet and not to deal with it. You need to deal with it. What I'm saying is when God comes to you and he tells you to do something and you have repented, you keep going. You do what God told you to do. So if they told you you was getting high with me last night, yeah, I did. But I repented and I'm saved that I ain't doing it no more. God will forgive you. He loves you. We should not lust after evil things. What's lusting after evil things? You want to smoke weed. Oh, weed is legal. So it's okay. No, it's not. Because weed is legal, don't make it right. Because slavery was legal, it didn't make it right. Jim Crow was legal, it didn't make it right. They would come in and take land and property from from black people and from Indians. It was a law that, but it didn't make it right. So everything that's a law don't make it right. I, I said this before, just because it's a law don't make it right. Hallelujah, let me just go ahead and say it. Just because it's a law that they saying it's, it's a law that homosexuals can marry, can marry, it don't make it right. Why? Because it's going against the laws of Christ. It's going against the word of God. That's why. So remember, when somebody telling you, oh, well, it's legal now. All you got to do is tell them slavery was legal too. So now what? <laughs> did, did that make it right? No, it didn't. So don't bring that to me. We got to understand what we are supposed to do as saints of God. What you're supposed to do is not what I'm supposed to do. You do what God called you to do and how he called you to do it. As long as you stand in the will of God. Hallelujah. Oh, remember, I just got through with that series of prayer. You got to keep praying. You got to keep reading your Bible. As you do that, your faith will, will grow. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We are about to end this. And I do thank you for joining us. Remember, if you want to get saved, say a prayer of repentance. Hallelujah. And let me just follow me and I'm going to help you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now and I ask you to forgive me for everything that I've done that's wrong. Father God, I did wrong. I acknowledge my sins. I come to you right now and I ask you to forgive me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Strengthen me, Lord that I don't fall back into my sin. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for saving me right now. I thank you for making me a clean, holy, and pure vessel in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, for everybody who wanted strength, you pray and ask the Lord to give you strength. You might be tempted right now. You ask the Lord, Lord, give me strength that I don't fall to, the, to this temptation. Okay? Lord, you give me strength that I'll know how to handle this. Give me strength that I can run from it. Hallelujah. And not play with it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Again, this is the Heart of David International Ministries. I'm your pastor, Dr. Mark Dean. Listen, I have a YouTube channel now. So I'm uploading my, uh, some videos on my YouTube channel. And that channel is the Heart of David International Ministries. So please go like and share. Glory be to God. I look forward to seeing you this evening at 5 p.m. Pacific time for our night service. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God bless you. Have a nice evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.